Staying Alive UK. Share your story. Great to see you, Neil. How you doing, Michael? For, yeah, I'm doing great. And uh, thanks for doing this. I'm, I'm, I'm really looking forward to hearing your story because I had a glimpse uh, during a Zoom speaking thing you and I did. You know, we were the kind of speakers on this event and, and I had a bit of an insight and I went, oh, I want to hear more of your story. <laughs> so <laughs> thanks for doing this. Uh, I really appreciate it uh, and I'm looking forward to it. So what I ask everybody the same first question. My listeners are probably bored with it. And that is, tell us all a little bit about your kind of backstory origination. So where were you born? Did you move around? Okay, this is to school, your education. <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, we've... Your, your, your career. Let me finish. Let me finish your career. Yeah, what was the first job? Uh, how did then all progress? And then, of course, how did you come to do what you're doing today? Um, and we want to hear all about that too, but we want to hear the, the beginning, the start of Neil. So over to you. <laughs> uh, the, the, the birth of Neil, firstly, do you, do you know what? My, I'm going to prove that I was brought up proper, Michael, by my, by my parents. Um, yes. I'm going to say thank you very much for having me. I'll add a little bit there after as well, because no one else will, especially <laughs> the second time. But all jokes aside, thank you very, very much for having me. And wasn't it a good thing that we both spoke on? It was um, it was about men playing a part in the world as women. And uh, yeah, come on, free the men. Let's stand up for the men. Um, so you, <laughs> you, you, you asked a question. So let's start off right at the beginning. Neil Gillow was born in 1971. Um, and for any of those that try to fill an online form in, um, I get repetitive strain in, um, when, when I actually try and scroll down <laughs> to 1971. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> they should make it easier for us. I was born in Lambeth, um, which is south of the river in London, um, and that makes me a Cockney. I don't know whether any of your listeners or viewers or anything anyone knows about Cockneys, but they're predominantly people that were brought up in the East End under the sound of the Bow Bells, mm. which is a, a bell that rung every single day in Bow. Clever that. Um, so <laughs> we, we moved from there. I was born, uh, and I'm still very, very, very blessed to have two beautiful humans um, that 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 looked after me, otherwise known as parents. Um, yes. And be before we move on, um, I'm not lucky. I'm blessed mm. to have those two beautiful people that literally drove the car, threw me out, mm. let me let me get back in again dusted me off and still to this day at 50 years old I'm blessed to have them so I tell you that for a reason because the story will become apparent we then moved from there so my parents are hard workers they always have been so my mother worked for Marks and Spencers for many years in the buying department and my father was a uh, black taxi driver not black as in color but black as in black but London black cab. Um, so we moved from where we were and we moved mm. to a little town called Lee on Sea in Essex. Right. Which, which as it as it says in the words, was a little seaside town. Oh, gorgeous. And if <laughs> what a phenomenal upbringing. You can see the smile in my face and yeah, everything. The memories. Oh. <laughs> You know, we, we came out, we turned left, we walked 100 yards and the sea was there. Mm. You, know, you, you walked out and every single day, the, if you've lived by the sea before, you, you, you'll understand where I'm coming from. It's the smell, it's the feel, it's the it's just the ambience and walking by the side of it and the serenity is just unbelievable. So we stayed there for about 10 years. And my father used to travel back and forward from London yeah. in a black taxi um, every single night, every single day. Uh, he ended up running a fleet of taxis and they bought a restaurant in Leon C. Gosh. So my parents weren't scared of working. No. 
So I always remember us coming out of school, instead of turning left and going home, we turned right, had something to eat, and then went home and the au pairs looked after us. <laughs> a fantastic, phenomenal upbringing. Mm. With a mother who swore beautifully and a father that just looked <laughs> at you and you knew. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, think, yeah. So we left um, there and the story behind that, it's really putting a smile on. i got to thank you for this because you're putting a smile on my face. My parents yes. went to America on holiday for two weeks. Yeah. I'm mean, thinking, what has this got to do with it? And they left us with our grandparents. And I came back and this was the story. We met someone in the line in Disneyland mm -hmm. and um, we're selling the house and um, we're moving to Arizona. Whoa. We're like, <laughs> what? <laughs> Sorry? We're selling the house. Okay, fine. So, eight weeks later, the six bedroom semi detached house was sold. Yeah. For £76,500. I know that because I had the cash in my hands. <laughs> We had eight suitcases and we went and got on an aeroplane to Arizona. Wow. Under a small conversation that took place in the line, lining up with a couple who said to my mum and dad, come on, come out here. Your accents mm. smash it. We've got stuff for you. My mum went into public speaking about crime prevention and then herbal life. This is... Yeah. 35 years ago. Mm. Um, and my father went into steel fabrication and they set up a company, him and this guy that he met, they set up a company that did the first car washes in Arizona. Whoa. Now you can imagine it's really dusty in Arizona. So car washes did really well. It's the desert. <laughs> and at that time, it really was the desert. Yeah. So we moved four times, Tempe, Arizona, Tempe, Phoenix, and finally we ended up in a beautiful place called Mesa, um, just before Tabletop Mountain, which is just, wow. Mm. Just, I mean, I can close my eyes and take myself back there 35 years ago. That came to an end because my grandfather wasn't well three right. years later, and we came home. Right. Now, this is where the story becomes what it's all about. We came home. My mother, my, my grandparent, my, my grandfather was fine. He was, he was okay. Uh, we came home. My dad went back to being on the cabs. My mum went to go and being self-employed. We didn't have a home. We didn't have a home. We came wow. back with, we didn't come back with, with a huge amount, but, we didn't come back with enough money to buy a house again. No. So I'll always remember my mum, bless her, she took my brother and I and she walked into a housing office in Islington and said to both of us before, we, before she walked in, she went, I'm going to cry. Don't pay any attention to mummy. <laughs> she knows what she wants. And we walked in. We sat there and she switched the waterworks on like that. <laughs> Ended up in a three bedroom council house on a count cancel estate where yeah. huh, you want to talk about color creed, race and religion. It was eclectic. Let's just put it like that. Yeah. And when I say eclectic, it was black, white, Muslim, Chinese, Indian, Pakistani, drug dealers, drug takers, crack mm. addicts, broken windows, broken bottles, needles. So I'd gone from this. The desert. <laughs> from the desert yeah. to a war zone. Yeah. To a war zone. I'm Jewish. How old were you? How old were you now? Thirteen, fourteen. 
Oh my god. <laughs> oh, that's dangerous age. <laughs> so, so uh, I have to say so. My my brother who who I love to bits and pieces, he's eleven months and three weeks older than me. Right. Okay. So I'm Jewish by faith. Okay. So predominantly in the area that we that we that area that we were brought in was there was a place called Stanford Hill where all the Jews were that the Orthodox were and the non-Orthodox yeah. and it was just kind of felt like home, but yeah. it was it was dodgy, Michael. Hmm. It was it was dodgy. So we were sent to a school which was Jewish free school. Um, the 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 clues in the art in, in the word. Yes. Um, and I can pinpoint it. I didn't like it. I didn't like it. And one of the reasons, a few reasons, first of all, authority. Second of all, I was taken away from something that I absolutely loved and put into an inner city zoo. Yeah. Full of, and this is going to sound very, very rude, and I don't want it to be, mm. full of Jews. But different types of Jews. Yeah. You had the rich Jews that turned right and went to the nice houses. You had the poor Jews that turned left and went to the council estates in Stanford Hill. Yeah. You had the Israelis who had come over. You had the South Africans who had come over. Yeah. So you didn't quite know which group you fitted into. Which tribe, yeah. Which, which tribe, and it was yeah. the, it was the one tribe. Now, let me give you an idea. When you walked out of this school, um, you were wearing a blue blazer with a yellow flame on it. Clever, mm -hmm. clever for Jews. And we used to walk out, and the schools either side of us used to wait for us to walk out to beat the living daylights out of us. Oh wow. They knew where we were. <laughs> yeah. And we made it even more apparent by walking out in, in the Belisha beacons, which were the blue places with the yellow, yellow star. Yeah. So it kind of got me to a point where I didn't understand it. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah, totally. Yeah, you're confused. What's going on here? Yeah. So my parents have brought me back. I understand why they did it. I'm not having a go at them. And they put me in, in, in a goldfish bowl. Mm. But as soon as you walked out of this goldfish bowl, the whole world was there. I mean, you turn right, you went to Camden Town, there were drug dealers walking around. Yeah. You turned, you turned, you turned left, you went to Finsbury Park, there were some undesirable things going on at the yeah. age of 14, 15. Let's move on. My parents are very supportive. I, I don't use the word hate. I detested school with a passion. Mm. And I always made sure that you knew I was there when I was there. <laughs> <laughs> I told them I was going to set fire to the classroom. They didn't believe me. Mm. Today, I would have been diagnosed with ADHD. Yeah, I was I was a horrible little brat then. The last straw was me walking in front of the headmistress's office outside over the fences, turning around and giving her the two fingers. To which my mother was called in again, and I got expelled. Yeah, uh, just before fifteen. I got expelled. Mm. It wasn't nasty. I wasn't, there, was, there wasn't a bad bone in my body. I didn't go out to hurt anyone. No. I just caused disruption. So what I'd learned from the outside, I bought in, and it was a, a 13, 14, 15 year old kid trying to work out what's going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Went home and I remember the conversation, sat down in front of mum and dad, they weren't angry weren't angry at all. And by this time we'd moved to Farringdon, which was in the city. 
My dad said yes. to me, more than welcome to stay under this roof. Boy, I love you to bits and pieces. But no ticket, no washy. Oh, and by the way, no one goes on the dole in this house. Sorry? He went, no, 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 no. It doesn't work like that. Because once you start asking, you can't stop taking. Mm. So you need to get up off your ass and go and find a job. You have a week to do it. What? You have a week to do it. <laughs> oh. If you need any help, call me. Okay, cool. So the first day I sat there thought, yeah, this is the rest of my life. He doesn't mean this. They don't mean it. Second day, did exactly the same. Third day, my dad walked into my room and looked at me. He went, you've got five days left. That's 120 hours. You make the most of it every single hour, son. I got up, got a suit on, and I went down to Hatton Garden, which was about a 15-minute walk from home. And I used what I had. Excuse me, excuse me, mate, have you got a job? No. I went to the next one. Excuse me, mate, have you got a job? No. 15 excuse me mates later, someone turned around and went, yeah, go on, I'll give you a job. <laughs> Pick the broom up now. What? Pick the broom up. So I picked the broom up there and then. He went, do me a favour, just sweep the workshop, please. And I swept the workshop, picked it up, put it in a dustpan and brush and put it in the bin. He walked back in, he went, you got the job. 70 quid a week. Not bad. I went home, right? I went home and my dad wasn't home yet. He walked in, mum, we all sat, we all sat around the table. Said, What'd you get up to today? I said, Dad, what? I got a job. Oh yeah, what are you doing? I'm working in a jewellery workshop in Hatton Garden. The smile on his face <laughs> was just I can still remember it. It makes me feel warm. So they'd allowed, but they hadn't allowed. You want to drop out, you drop out. Yeah. But there's no dossing. Mm. So for the next two to three years, I learned how to make jewellery. I learned how to go around to the hardware shop and ask for a glass hammer. Um, ask for elbow grease as well. Um, very embarrassing times. Um, yeah. But... but <laughs> 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 but, but these are all the things you get the apprentice yeah the apprentice <laughs> <laughs> but you know what michael we've all been there before haven't we yeah you everyone now wants to walk into a sixty thousand pound job but you you gotta start sweeping the floor 100 percent. yeah you know, I, I was running around with jewelry i was making jewelry i, I, I built myself up i became the salesman shop front right i was it was I awesome loved it. i loved it yeah um at this point my brother was in savile row he he decided to be a tailor <laughs> my dad was still a cab driver and my mum had found a job in a mailing house she was working for a lady in a mailing house now a mailing mm. house with pieces of paper into envelopes and posts them out yeah so she was working for this lady and this lady pulled her in. She was only working there about eight weeks. Pulled her in, sat her down. She was the PA. She said, right, um, I'd like you to invite all of the clients to the, the, the boat in Henry Regatta. Mm. Um, but I would like you to leave uh, Muslim Aid, um, Jewish Fund, and uh, Amnesty International out of it. And my mum went, Okay. All right. Didn't ask the question. Went and invited anyone, but got in touch with those three and told them that they weren't invited. <laughs> a month later, my mum had rented out a room, 250 square foot, and they were our first three clients. Yeah. My mum's a doer. She's not a talker. She told 
for anyone out there that knows about Jewish mothers, when they when they tell you what to do, you do it before they finish the sentence. She told my brother, she told me, and she told my dad that we were to be there to help her run the business. Right. Along with my then girlfriend, now wife, we all went in and started this mailing house. We didn't know what we were doing. No. So we moved from the careers that we loved into something that was, and if my mum's watching this, you'll understand what I'm saying, you know, I'm going to say something here. I always remember the conversation, mum, we get shit wages. And her reply was, yes, but they're the same shit wages every month, darling. <laughs> <laughs> it means you're getting something every month. Exactly. Yeah. So fast forward 12 years, we retired dad. Fast forward 15 years, we retired mum. I was predominantly the one that ran the business. Front of house, looking after the clients, pulling the clients in, making sure they're all right, doing the quotes. And my brother was dealing everything behind, all the staff, yeah. all the stock, all the gut Operations. Sure, all the operations. Yeah. Um, and it got to a point whereby we were doing... We were smashing it. There's the terminology. Nice cars, nice houses, nice holidays, everything. It was all good. All good. Until one day, before a very large client was coming to sign a contract with us, I turned around about 20 minutes before they were coming in, I turned around to find my brother in a fetal position on the floor having another mental breakdown. My, su my brother suffers from mental health. Has done for right. years. Yeah. We, we always dealt with it, but bang, he'd gone. So I asked the supervisor, I've got a smile on my face, you've got to smile at stuff like this because you got through it. I asked the supervisor to come in, grab hold of him, take him to the cafe where mum could get him and we'd get him sorted later on. I walked into the meeting, nailed the meeting, of course, and got the contract. Yeah. They walked out and as they walked out, <clears throat> it all hit me. Mm. What are we doing? All these staff, all these clients. <clears throat> we're, we were in a bitching business because when someone said jump, you had to say how high. Yeah. It was all deadlines. I've got to get this out by now. It's got to be printed by now. I've got to have these names and addresses clean. And it was always... Yeah. And I sat down after that meeting and I thought, no, I'm not... I love whatever I do. Because if I don't, I can't... I, yeah. I mean, I'm, a, I'm a passionate footballer watching watching, going, playing. If I can't do that 100%, something not right. So we carried on. Um, my brother had found himself in um, a nice padded room with a self-hugging jacket, as we called it at the time, mm. for a while, for a while, uh, which left me running the business. Um. And my brother was convalescing. He was coming back and he was coming in a little bit, but he wasn't all there. Mm. And I felt myself, I liken it to phyllo pastry. Thousands yes. of legs. Right. And if anyone's listening to this or shaking their head or nodding their head thinking, yeah, I, I get this. It was just a, and it was pushing. It was pushing. So my brother's not well. My relationship there's not great. I haven't got time to go out and do what I want to do. When I do go out, I really blow out big time. I get too involved in the clients. I, I feel it too much. I'm, I'm doing too many hours. I'm running around like a blue ass fly. Um, 2nd of December, 2016, um, I woke up rocking and rolling and if anyone's ever been there before it is it is one of the darkest places I have ever been however it led me this is going to sound like 
oh, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. But it led me to light. It led me to realization. It led me to, I've never been really materialistic, but I like nice things. Not important what car you're driving. <laughs> you got a car that works when you're getting it. It's not important that you lived in a six bedroom semi-detached. Is your house a home? Is it warm? Has it got food in the fridge? Is there, is there love there? Yeah. Are your friends really looking after you? Are the people in your in your circle? And I, I started looking very, very deeply into everything. Yeah. And I took my time. I took my time. But I came back too quick because the business was having problems without me. Yeah. So when I say I came back too quick, I came back 10 days after that first incident. I was back sitting at my desk. It was a bad move. Mm. It was a bad move because I was there, but I didn't want to be there. I just, I started hating stuff. Yeah. My brother wasn't pulling his weight. He wasn't there again. He, he was ill. Mm -hmm. And I understood it. And one day I received a phone call from a client. We'd sent out a, a mailing of 12,000. And they were, let's say, a picky client, Michael. We've all got them, haven't we? Yes. But they paid the bills. Um, and they said, look, we've got a good response. The phones are going. Everything's great because we sent them out a mailing that, that asked for a response via telephone. Yeah. Just a slight problem. I said, what seems to be the problem? She said, well, the managing director got his. Um, the financial director got his. CEO got his and a few of the salesmen got his because we put them in the seats. So you saw when they dropped, so you got your mailing. It, it, I got my mailing and it, it just proved that the mailing was sent out on time. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 I said, I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, and said, I didn't get mine. And I sat there and well, excuse me. She went, yeah, I, I didn't get mine. Could you tell me why? I went, so your phones are going. You're happy with the response. Everyone else bar you got the envelope. Mm. What, excuse my French, but this is, have you ever seen Falling Down before with Michael Douglas? When he walks yes. in and asks for a burger and they say, a uh, uh, breakfast and they say, no, sir, it's 11.01. And That's just, right. He wanted and breakfast or something, yeah. He, want, he wanted breakfast, sod 11.01, and he took the yeah. shotgun out, and it was just like, bang. Well, that's what I felt at that time. Yeah. I took the shotgun out, literally, mentally, not physically, mentally, and I went, what the fuck do you want me to do about it, was my answer to her. Mm. And it went quiet. She went, excuse me. And I put the phone down. I pushed myself back from the desk and the phone went again. I picked it up. It was her. Neil Giller, Central Director, how can I help you? You're very rude. You put the phone down. I said, do me a favour, lose my number. And I put the phone down again. And I got up. Two weeks later, I gave the landlord his key back. <laughs> and I managed to, whilst my brother was ill again, yeah. In a, in a cell, not having a clue what's going on. I got rid of the business. Got rid of my income, got rid of my living, got rid of something that bought food and yeah. money into the household for over 23 years. Mm. And as my mother used to say, shit money, but regular shit money. Yeah. <laughs> and the day that I did it, the day that I put the key in, Turned it for the last time, turned around to the managing agent, went, there you go. Thank you very much. There were two feelings, Michael. First of all, one of great sadness that I'd failed. Of 
course, yeah. Not just myself, but my mother who set the business up. Yeah. And my brother who didn't have a clue that he didn't have a job to come back to. Mm. And on the other side, it was like waking up from that depression. It was like, whew, wow. Yeah. Now what? Now what? Now what? So I became the middleman, dealing with mailings, print, distribution, door to door. Yes. And you know what? I was earning more money then than I ever had. Wow. With less work, being the middleman. And less stress. Probably. Taking the business. Absolutely. So I was just buying, I was buying business and selling it. Does that, does that make sense? And yeah. earning, right, okay, so here we go. So someone will come to me, they say to me, right, can you do a 20,000 mailing, right? Yeah. I'll go to a mailing house who I know very well and have known for 25 years because I've been in the business. Yes. And I go to them, right, I've got this job. How much do you want to charge me? They charge yeah. me 1,500 quid. Yeah. I go to the client and say, right, 2,000 pounds. Yeah. And I didn't have to do, all I had to do was just, I was the middleman. Yeah. And every client understood that I was the middleman. They understood that I didn't have my own. I was a negotiator. I was the one that would get them the best price per unit to get sent out, even being the middleman. Well, because I guess you have the inside knowledge. You know who to go to for what kind of jobs which would save the company that's employing you a huge amount of time, effort and stress. Absolutely. And it's faster that way. So regardless, they might have to pay you a bit of a premium. They would save money probably in the long term. You know, it's the outsourcing thing. Yeah, right? yeah, 100%. How much does it cost you to do inside? How much will a marketing department cost you compared to how much if you throw this problem at Neil Giller? I mean, there are many problem, mainly marketing problems that I've solved before. Yeah. How do you send out 9,000 nine-inch biscuits? How do you send out 25,000 little dinky toys? How do, you, how do you pack gin without it smashing? Uh, trust mm -hmm. me, that, that job was brilliant. How do you yeah. send out 450,000 packs of wheat crunchy crisps? How do you, right? These are yeah. all things that, that I can deal with. Yeah. So I kept hold of doing that. So I'm a massive networker as well. I yeah. I... I consulted for a very large networking organization in the UK and looked after a region for them for a year and a half mm -hmm. um, because my background is networking. I've networked since I was, well, since I walked into the shops and gone, all right, mate, have you got a job? Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> that, that's networking, isn't it? A hundred percent, yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I talk to people, I listen to people. So about a year and a half ago, I came up with a cockamamie idea. And all cockamamie eureka ideas are, are, are the best ones. I thought, you know what? I'm going to help people breathe. Okay. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to start talking about mental health. I'm going to start talking about mental health. Mm. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to help people in business that suffer with mental health. Oh, right. It's all coming. It's all coming together. Mm. So my mental health first aid course at the beginning of the year. And it's all coming together. So I've got the mailing side of things. Yeah. The working side of things. And this little thing here that really burns a light, which is making people understand. There's a terminology, it's okay not to be okay. Yeah. Business people, it's okay to drop one of those juggling balls. You can't do everything. No. And do you know why I know you can't do everything? Because I've been there, I've seen it, and I'm wearing the T-shirt. Yeah. Like you. You're wearing the T-shirt today, Michael. Why? Yeah. Why? Yeah. Why? That's that. How apt? Because that is the question that took me on my journey. I was in a seminar four years ago. 
And they asked what your why is. And we had this conversation before. My why is I aspire to inspire before I expire. I aspire to inspire before I expire. I'm on a mission, not from God. <laughs> I'm on a mission. My mother tells me, if you can put a smile on five, people's, on five people's faces a day that you don't know, what a glorious thing you've done. Put your head down at night. You've achieved what you need to. Yeah. So still doing this mailing, not as much now because I don't enjoy it. Mm-hmm. I do it for the clients that I've trained and the ones that behave themselves. And I know that sounds quite aloof, but I don't want to deal with aggravation anymore. No. Um, I still do the networking, heavily involved in networking, because I enjoy helping people win. Mm. This networking is a game. And I've been in it for 30 years. I'm CPD trained. So I can teach you anything from referrals, how to have a one-to-one, how to build a relationship, how to work a room, how to gain business for others, how to market yourself, which is my background. So I put the network in and the marketing together. And I started something up called the People Consultancy. I actually want to call it the Good People Consultancy. The what? The, The Good People Consultancy. The Good People, right. And it's helping people, and again, I don't want this to sound aloof, not one of my partners, you lot call them clients, (laughs) not one of my partners has chosen me. I chose them. Mm. I've got eight beautiful partners at the moment in under, what what month are we in now? Eighth month? Right. Eighth month. I started it in January. I have eight beautiful partners. One won a three hundred thousand pound contract a couple of weeks ago. One got out of bed yesterday. They had a shower as well. One stopped betting three weeks ago, and every single day, we're counting the days. Yeah. Today is day 20. Oh, by the way, we deal with his business as well. One girl out of a toxic relationship where the guy was beating the living daylights out of her mentally, which is worse than physically. Yeah. For eight years. He's gone. Good. Her business is shooting to the next level. We won a contract with a small company called Louis Vuitton. One of my clients fantastic police officer for 30 years and thinks that's how you behave on the outside. Excuse the pun and the terminology. Yeah. We rounded her off. She's now a lovable ex policeman or police person who uses everything that she had there now in the life that she's dealing with. Yeah. I've got a kitchen supplier. I've got a a plumber. It's so eclectic. There's that word again. I can't pigeonhole myself. And I'm going to admit that all of these people just need a little cuddle, a little arm round the shoulder, Mm. a little shut up. You're talking bullshit. Now go and get it done. Or I hear your bullshit. Let's work out if it really is bullshit or if we need to deal with it. Yeah. Or last night, last night at six o'clock, one of my clients WhatsApped me, Nelly, that's my nickname. Nelly, Nelly, what? Just done a five kilometer run. I'm like, well done, bro. Well done, bro. How do you feel? I feel unbelievable. The conversation we had that day was what makes you feel good? Running. How do you feel after running? Elated, chilled. I love what I do. Enjoy it. I love being around people. When was the last time you did it? Two months ago. Get your trainers on and go for a run. Okay. All right, all right. No, 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 no. Put it, in your <laughs> put it in your diary and get it done. Amazing. When he put it in his diary and got it done, how he felt. Yeah, yeah. 
telling me you didn't have the time to do it. You have the time. Yeah. There's one thing we can't buy. Doesn't matter how rich you are. Doesn't matter how rich you are. You cannot buy time. No. If you're dying from cancer and the specialists from the NHS all the way up to the multimillionaires that, that, that deal with cancer, the ornithologists, mm. they tell you you're dying and you've got six weeks left. There's no amount of money that could buy you more time. We are here for such a minute amount of time. Mm. We are a pinprick in time. We've got to make the most of it every single day. Am I doing the best that I can? Yes. Am I blessed? I woke up this morning. My family is still here. Am I an angel? Far from it. Have I done wrong? Hundreds of times. But on the whole, I think the most important thing is to be a shining light. It's to be a radiator in life. It's to be there for people who think they can't carry on. <laughs> I can't walk past anyone now, and I never have been able to, without turning around and going, you're right. Are you all right? And that, that's, that's brought me to where I want to be. Some people call me a life coach. Some people call me a business mm. coach. Mm. You, they can call me what they want. I, I really don't like the terminology coach. No. It doesn't, it doesn't do it for me. I'm a facilitator. I'm an interior designer. <laughs> I like that. I'm an interior designer. I help my, my clients turn their can'ts into cans. I can't get out of bed this morning. I can't go to that meeting. I can't open that brown envelope. I can't go to work. You can. Yeah. Sometimes you just need to have someone turning around and going, all right, okay. It's like yesterday, one of my clients turned around and said, I can't make this phone call. I said, what do you mean you can't do it? I, I can't make it. Who can't make it? I can't make it. Well, it's your, your, you that can't make it. What happens? Why can't you make it? Well, this is going to happen. You haven't got a clue what's going to happen. No. You've made up a scenario. Now, whether you like it or not, you've got to make this phone call. The longer you leave it, the more you're going to get worked up. I'm lucky that I suffer with anxiety because it gets to me before, Right. But people that don't suffer with anxiety, I'm anxious for them. <laughs> <laughs> Just make the bloody phone call, please. I'm not worried about it. Just make the call. Because <laughs> I've, I've got it in my notes that you still haven't made the call. Please, Just make the, I'll make the call for you. I'm not worried about it. Just make the call. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You know what? what, what I think. You, you know, just to kind of jump on to give you, just give you a little bit of a break, um, Aversion is one of the biggest things that we practice in life that stresses us out, that makes us unhappy, um, that causes all sorts of problems, that keeps us up at night, that stresses us out in the morning, that determines our dreams, um, aversion, aversion. And, you know, when you say the can't, turning the can'ts into cans is, you know, removing the aversion or turning the aversion into, you know, something that people can get on with and do and, and get rid of that stress in their body. I, I saw, I'll send it to you because you will love this because of your radiator analogy. Somebody posted a picture on LinkedIn this morning and i did did some research on it and then i found the paper where they'd done this scientific research where the feelings that people have 
and the stress in their bodies or the happy feelings, what it does to the energy in the body. And they've kind of colored like a little silhouette of a body out. And it's really, really, I haven't read all the research yet, but it's, it's fascinating where it, where the stress resides, you know, in the body. And we talk about disease and we talk about, we talked earlier about cancer, you know, and you can, yeah. Is it, is it physical? Is it biological? Is it mental? You know, is it psychological? Um, I cancer? think it's all the above, isn't it? All of the above. I yeah. think it, because we can see people that, that have been diagnosed and they're like, no way, no way is this going to get me? And they get through it. Yeah. And then you get people that are like, oh, and, oh, I can't. And it gets them. I mean, my mother-in-law, bless her, God rest her soul. First mm. time, I'm fighting this. Come on. Come on. There's no way yeah. you're getting me clear. Five years yeah. later, whew, come on then. I'll, I'll, come on, I'll fight you again. Come on. Yeah. It's got me all clear. And then two years later, do you know what? I've had enough. Yeah. And I remember those the, the three times that she was diagnosed, the, 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 the feeling every single time. So I love what you said there. And, I, and I'll take that because every time I used to get, I don't do anger. But every mm. time you, you get angry, if you think to yourself, that could be causing you cancer. Mm. That, would you stop getting angry? Yeah. Mm. Would? Mm. Yeah. I don't, do, I don't do anger. And that's it. I'd love to see that, please, because colours for me are really, really important. And I talk about that radiator in life. Yeah. You've got Joyce, you can be a radiator or a drain. For those of you who don't get it, radiators rate good things and warmth. Drains do the complete opposite. They take everything. If you've got drains around you in life, it's like being it's like being a drug addict, right? And wanting to come off of the drugs and having and, and sitting in in a crack den. You're not mm -hmm. going to be able to come off of them, are you? No. So if you surround yourself with those with those drug dealers and, and the drug takers, you can't come off of them. You've got to completely move yourself away and go and sit with the people that don't do that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I'd love to see what that is. I'd love to, it's an aura thing as well, isn't it? I see all I, I see colors in people. Yeah, I, I, I have to admit I haven't read the full research and just the headline. It is not kind of aura photography. There's a name for it. It's not that. Um, I think they did research with people to say, okay, you're feeling this way. Where are you feeling it in your body? right and then they did a research across a lot of people who were confirming the same symptoms in terms of where they were feeling it in their body is it in their chest is it in the head and and then the degree of it so you know how how stressful is it in your body so they then did the kind of coloring of these silhouettes physical wow. silhouettes to to show that yeah. and I, I don't. I think the research goes back a while, 2013. You know, it's in the last decade or so, just just over. But it, you know, confirms for me uh, all the things we've just been talking about, really, um, about how it you know affects people. And I believe aversion, which is what you talked about with with what you're helping people to do is is causing a lot of that you know physical stress in people's bodies and also um it's addictive you know emotions are addictive because you know how you're going to feel when you go into anger or sadness or depression you get certainty about well if i go in that into that place i know how i'm going to feel so i might as well just go there because I don't know what the other bit's going to be if I move towards happiness or towards doing that, you know, I can do attitude. I don't know what that's scary because it's uncertain. At least I can go there because I know I'm going to feel rubbish. I can go and sit there. It's easier. 
and it's more it's more addictive as well for okay me, for me very very quickly first of all i call them pity parties <laughs> yes so we're all allowed we're all allowed those pity parties you know where you invite mm -hmm. yourself and you just sit there going oh, oh you're allowed yeah it's yeah. being human isn't it right, right. people think that you're weak if you go into a pity party now what i do is right i allow myself a pity party <laughs> and i give myself a time right so yes. I will sit there and allow myself half an hour to go, and this one doesn't like me. And, <laughs> no. I, didn't, and I didn't get that. And, oh, I didn't do this. And then all of a sudden, there's a word that I use. People say, Neil, you're always smiling. You're always shining. Right? You're always glowing. And my answer is, what's the alternative? Yes. What's the alternative? Because if you want me to walk around with a face down to the ground, moaning about the weather. Yeah. You know? I mean, you asked me how summer was. I could have given you an English answer, which would have lasted yeah. 45 minutes about the weather. But it is what it is. You know it what? I woke what up is. this morning. The sun's shining. Yay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it might not be 30 or 35, but the sun's shining. Mm. I gave my daughter a cuddle this morning, my dog. I'm going to take him for a walk afterwards. Mm. I'm going to speak to a friend later on. I'm going to do some networking later. Blessed. Blessed. Oh, in the rain, I've got to go to work. Oh, I've got a meeting later on. Oh, I've got to go do networking. No. Look forward to everything. Yeah. Allow that pity party and know that there is an alternative. My alternative isn't there. I walk around with a smile on my face all the time. <laughs> perfect perfect oh neil that it's it's so fascinating and um we we could talk for hours about the, the topic um so just to confirm the name not of a title of you because i get that you're a facilitator interior designer i love those I love the interior designer <laughs> bit. I, that's brand new. I mean, you need to put that on your LinkedIn. Profile. I tell you so, I was invited to a networking do a couple of months ago, and they said, could you tell us what your category is? I said, yeah, I'm an interior designer. And they were like, okay, cool, 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 cool. And I walked in there, and <laughs> uh, so, someone pinged me just like in the chat. They went, oh, I need to speak to you. I've got three projects that I'm doing. And I'm yeah. just, a builder. I think I'm just yeah. taking the wrong, wrong end of the stick, bless him. <laughs> yeah, I'm, de I'm definitely doing that, definitely doing that. Because I think it's uh, somebody, uh, and he, he is a coach, he, he told me he's um, he's a bomb disposal expert or something, you know, uh, and everybody goes, what, you do that? Yeah, with people, <laughs> you know, not with real bombs, with people. I love that. Uh, yeah. And um, so the name of the company, because you said Good People Consultancy. Correct. So there, there's two companies that I run. One's called Stuff the Rest. Yes. Um, which is my mailing and marketing side. Oh, I love that. Yeah. I love that as well, yeah. Uh, and we also help our clients with uh, presentation as well. So S Stuff the Rest, we can do better than you. So yes, we make, yes. Them, we make them better than, or, or, or we put them in front of their their, their, their competition. Oh, it's New business. Awesome which was which was invented in a eureka moment is called the um the winning people the good winning people consultancy which is just just grabbing older people being their mentor their person that they can go to and go ah what do i do yeah. now um, i've had it all before running a, a multi-million pound business where that brown envelope comes in and you don't know how you're going to pay it or winning that yeah. phenomenal contract or juggling all of that business at the same time or yeah. finding time to be you mm. and if, if i've got anything to say ladies gentlemen boys and girls if you, you listen to anything you've got this far love yourself before you mm. go loving anyone else yeah because you can't pour from an empty cup and i know it's a, an old saying you cannot pour from an empty cup so if you want one tip from me be kind to yourself 
be kind yeah. to yourself. Yeah. Because if you can't do that, you can't be kind to anyone else. That includes your no. friends, family, and your clients. Brilliant. I love it. Love it. Awesome, Neil. So is there anything else that we haven't covered no. that you wanted um, to share? I think what I'm going to leave everyone with is um, something that I'm very, very passionate about. I'm here to smash the stigma of mental health yeah in the uk and or across the world and there's a saying out there it's okay not to be okay it is okay not to be okay but it's not okay not to be okay you have to do something about it so here's a little tip for everyone okay it's an english colloquialism that people turn around and go here i'll check this out michael i'm going to ask you a question i want you to answer it really really quickly please yeah mm. michael how are you doing you all right great right fantastic michael I really care. How are you doing? Everything all right? I'm outstanding. Right. Okay. Michael, are you sure you're all right? Is there anything? 100%. Else? Right. Okay. It's that asking it more yes. than once. Yes. It's that, it's that not believing in someone being, yes, this, I think it's the stiff upper lip mentality. Yeah. Yeah. So I yeah. want you to delve into people a lot more. I want you to think about the people who you know, love and couldn't deal without and i want you to go and ask them that question are you all right and when they say yep yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no 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 i'm being i'm being really serious are you all right yeah so yeah. if i'm leaving anything with you today or with your listeners or your viewers or whatever it is or that my mum who's going to watch this hello mum love you to bits and pieces um, <laughs> tell dad i'm live <laughs> 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 Just look after yourself, but look after everyone as well. Please, this is a planet. We've got to share it. We've got to look after. I'm going to sound, I sound like Greta Gunberg, don't I? But we've really got to look after the world and each other, ladies and gentlemen. We really do. Yes, yeah. I mean, it is a cliche and it is. it may sound corny, but the thing is we only have one planet and we only have one of us. <laughs> so, you know, so we've got to look after both of those uh, because Amen. without it, it's it's no fun. It's Amen. just not fun. Amen. And, you know, the trouble is people are hypnotized by the press, the media, the government uh, and themselves. They hypnotize themselves because they start to believe the rubbish that they make up about themselves, too. So. <laughs> It's believing in that hype, isn't it, Michael? You know, um, we've got a programme in England called Question Time, where the politicians come on and speak for an hour. Speak. <laughs> mm. um, I don't want to go all political here, but the last time I watched it was about five years ago, and I think I nearly broke the television. I, I've, I've not watched it since. No, because you've got no TV. <laughs> yeah, probably because there's no television, but, um, but I've not watched it since. Reason being is I choose not to listen to what they have to tell us, what they want us to believe. Go out, work it out, go and ask people. So mm. last year, Black Lives Matter. Do you know what I did as a white, as a white middle class guy? Mm. I went out and find out. I went out and found out what they were fighting for and why they were fighting for it. I wasn't one of these ignorant people who turned around and said, yeah, yeah, they can deal with it over there. Yeah. Yeah. I went and found out. I went onto the ground. I went and found out. And I don't want to sound like these people say I've got plenty of black friends. I have. Mm. I have a very, very broad base of friends, which is where we need to be in life to understand what's going on. Yeah. They say that Jews and Mus Muslims shouldn't mix. Huh. Who says that? Yeah. Who says it? They say that, that blacks and whites should be at war. Who says, who says that? Who? Who? Mm. Who is it? Mm. They said that we, we should hate it for, for religion, colour and creed. Who? Yeah. Who? No, no, no. Public Enemy, who were a rap band back in the late 80s, came up with a track, a song called Don't Believe the Hype. Yeah. Don't believe the hype, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to know about something, go and do something called research. Go and find out before you start disrespecting anything. Yeah, yeah. We're here together. What you said before, do you know what? And I don't want to sound like a Miss World, uni a Miss World co uh, contestant. We're here together. Come on. Come on. 
we're here together. <laughs> yeah. Start looking after each other. It, it, it's simple stuff, Michael. It really, really is. Really is. Thank you, Neil. No, all really worthwhile comments for people to know about. So if people wanted to get in touch with you, yeah. uh, where can they find you? Where's the best places for them? Okay. My name, uh, as you can see at the bottom, is Neil Giller. Um, I am Neil Giller everywhere. Right. So um, I once put, uh, uh, all right, I wanted to find out what Neil Giller was about. So I put Neil Giller into Google. Oh my God, he's a weirdo, that guy. All jokes aside, if you put Neil Giller into Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, and any other social media platform that you can think of, you will find me as Neil Giller. That is killer with a G if you don't <laughs> pay the bills. All right? <laughs> <laughs> okay well I'll, I'll include some links as well in case Thank people you. don't know how to do a search <laughs> so they can just click on the link they'll be looking in neil killer where is he where is he? neil where's killer neil, where's neil killer <laughs> i've had neil gorilla before so you can google that one as well if you want <laughs> oh brilliant i love it love it Thank you for having me. Seriously, thank you, thank you, thank you for having me. And I'm going to no, up. you're really welcome. Thank you so much for sharing your story and the great wisdom, advice, information, knowledge. Uh, yeah, it's going to be there forever for people to tap into. So thank I you. really appreciate um, all your nuggets, my friend. So uh, hopefully we will meet in person at a networking event. Who knows? <laughs> one day do what? i'll give you a big man hug if we do there you go so yeah 100%. obviously no, you're, gonna, you're not going to be coming to the same venue as me so there you go i'm off the man hug <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's it no no i love man hugs i promise you i mean i mean i mean most definitely <laughs> thank you very much i really appreciate you thank all you all right neil take care cheers, really cheers. good to speak with you take care all the best bye for now Pleasure. if you've enjoyed this podcast please rate subscribe and share at will I'm always looking for more listeners and guests, so do get in touch, please. You can find me pretty easily by searching for Staying Alive UK. Thank you. Staying Alive UK. Share your story.